afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Roto Bowler Waiver Wire Fantasy Baseball Series. I'm your host, Anthony Aniano. Happy to be with you as we take a look at some pitchers, starting and closers, who can help you in this early portion of the 2021 fantasy baseball season. Guys, don't forget, head over to rotobowler.com and check out everything there. The main page, the premium package, the expert chats, you name it, rotobowler.com is the place to be. Whether it's football, baseball, basketball, PGA, MMA, esports, NASCAR, you name it, rotobowler.com has you covered. Whether you play season-long or DFS formats. Okay, and guys, sign up for that MLB premium package right now. Use the promotional code ACES, telling them Anthony sent you, and get a discount on all the great content in that premium package, including including our DFS lineup optimizer, helping you win each and every day of the Major League Baseball season. All right, everybody, if you've been sitting here, you've seen all our off-season work, well, now it's time to work during the season and bring home fantasy championships. Uh, the, the the hitter waiver wire, the early season hitters are out there available. Check that out if you haven't already. But now we're going to take a look at a pitcher. I got three starting pitchers sitting on the waiver wire who we need to pay attention to. And then we'll talk about a couple of pitchers. If you've, if you've decided, I'm not going to invest heavily at closer. I'm going to kind of chase saves a little bit here and there. A couple of guys who could pick you up a few saves. Now again, we use the Yahoo roster percentages as our guiding point, 40% or lower for the most part, okay, using Yahoo.com. So we start with UC Kikuchi of the Seattle Mariners, 39% roster. In his first start, he went six innings with 10 strikeouts, gave up a few runs, but he overall, he pitched well. I'll sign up for those 10Ks. His next start is April 10th at the Minnesota Twins. Now, the third-year Major League Pro, took steps in 2020 that you kind of like. In 2019, his case per nine were about six and a half. 2020, he was averaging nine strikeouts per nine innings. And then you see 10 Ks in six innings in his first start of the season. Now, his walks per nine did go up. Not a number I wanted to see. That was a scary increase there from 2019 to 2020. But the other number I loved, two numbers I loved. His ERA last season sat at 5.17. Yet his exit was at 3-3, okay? Pitched to some bad luck. And the other number you got to love, besides that increase in strikeouts per nine innings for Kikuchi, is the home runs per nine, which went from two home runs per nine innings in 2019 to 0.57 last season. Higher strikeout rate, lower home run rate. I'm intrigued to say the least. 10 strikeouts in his first start. Faces Minnesota, which means Manny uh, Miguel Sano, Byron Buxton. There are strikeouts to be had against that Minnesota lineup. Okay, on April 10th, 39% rostered right now on Yahoo. Number two, Taiwan Walker of the Mets. Now, he hasn't had a start yet. The Mets haven't played yet. Talk about ruining my weekend. Nonetheless, 2020, okay, this guy pitched to a 2.70 ERA with over eight strikeouts per nine innings. In, in a 12-team league, He needs to be owned. I mean, that's just the bottom line, okay? I know the XFIP was high compared to the ERA, but nonetheless, pitching now at Citi Field in the National League does help that situation a little bit, uh, potentially for Taiwan Walker. He's healthy, finally. He'll be the Mets' third or fourth starter throughout the season, 29% rostered. Nice matchup April 8th against the Miami Marlins. He pitches the Mets' home opener uh, with, with all the cancellations over the course of the opening weekend in the Major League Baseball season. And the third and final starting pitcher I wanted to mention here today, Tariq Skubal of the Detroit Tigers. I have him in every single format I possibly can, okay? Last season, he pitched 32 innings uh, for the Detroit Tigers. 10.4 Ks per nine, just too high a number to ignore for a rookie who pitched, like I said, just 32 innings. So that was the number I focused on, is that strikeout rate. Going along with a walk rate that I find acceptable. It could be better, but it's acceptable at 3.09. Anybody who's ever watched me talk fantasy baseball, I want my pitchers to have a walk rate of less than three. But he's right there. 32 innings, a small sample, nonetheless, and as a rookie. Now, ERA was high, no doubt about it, 5.63. XFIP was 4.81. Comes back to A, some walks, and B, the home run. Okay, he gave up over two and a half home runs per nine innings. 
Okay, that's tough in 32 innings to overcome that. All right, but over a full season, he won an opening day job. His next start is April 4th at the time of this taping against the Cleveland Indians. All right, if he could lower that home run rate while maintaining 10 strikeouts per nine innings, he will be a useful pitcher throughout the fantasy season. On Yahoo, he is only rostered in 26% of leagues. He is my number one waiver wire ad at the starting pitching position. I'll take him over Kikuchi because I will chase those strikeouts. And if it doesn't work, if it costs me a couple of dollars in fab, so be it. None of these pitches am I paying heavily for. I'm not paying heavily for anybody right now. Understand that. Okay, we've played four to eight games or three games, depending on when you're watching this. So there is nobody who's getting any big money of a fab budget to be added to my team. These are all $1 and $2 plays. I will save that fab budget for A, if I'm in dire straits due to injury or ineffectiveness, or B, somebody who emerges out of nowhere that is a must, must add and somebody you have to pay heavily for. These guys aren't there yet. But Scooble is the guy I'll pay the most for. I'll go 4 or $5 for him out of my fab money and see how that goes, regardless of that start against Cleveland, because I am intrigued with over 10 strikeouts per nine innings. Now, let's talk closers, which is highly volatile this season. Very few, maybe about half the teams you feel real secure about the closer position, right? We've seen Wade Davis get a save for the Kansas City Royals. What is What year is it right now is the question I have to ask with that. So, so there, there are some things I'm not buying into. There are a lot of platoon situations. We've seen Mark Melanson walk away with saves, but he's he's rostered across the board. All right, so the first situation is the Toronto Blue Jays. We all thought it would be Jordan Romano, and I still think it will be. But opening day against the Yankees, it was a tie game. The Blue Jays pitched Romano in the ninth inning. They wanted to get to extra innings. Okay, Romano pitches the ninth. Blue Jays take the lead in the top of the 10th. Don't get me started on the extra inning rule. I hate it. It's terrible. I mean, it's terrible. Can we can we just acknowledge that right now? The extra inning rule is terrible. If you want to say you want to put a runner on second starting in the 12th, 13th inning, that's fine. But to start it at the 10th is terrible. But nonetheless, that's Major League Baseball for you. Nonetheless, Jordan Romano pitches the 9th, gets in and out of trouble. Toronto takes the lead in the top of the 10th. And they go to Julian Merriweather, 16% rostered. He locks the door, uh, shuts down the heart of the Yankee lineup, including John Carlos Stanton, gets the save. He's 16% rostered. That being said, Romano's still in line potentially to be the closer, but it's a situation where the reality is until we see Romano cement himself as that closer, the saves could potentially be there for both of these players. And Merriweather at 16% rostered is worth taking a flyer on if you haven't invested heavily in closers on your draft deck, all right? Number two, Gregory Soto of the Detroit Tigers. He got the save for Detroit opening day. He did give up a two-run home run, so his ERA looks ugly. But he right now is the closer for the Detroit Tigers, good, bad, or ugly. Again, it's a chasing save situation. Does Soto have the best stuff? No. Will he give up the long ball? Yes. But he will be given opportunities to save games. And he's only 11% roster. And again, he's going to come cheap. Because he didn't look great opening day. I don't foresee Detroit moving on, though, from their closer after one game. Soto will have the opportunity to save games. However many games Detroit wins is might not be very high. But nonetheless, Soto will be given the opportunity. Reminds me a little bit of Armando Benitez type of situation where he's going to drive you crazy, but at the end of the season could finish with 20 save opportunities. And finally, the third closer needs a little bit more roster, right? Soto's 11%, Merriweather's 16%. But Daniel Bard of the Colorado Rockies right now is grossly under-rostered, even though he sits at 53%. If you're looking for saves, he should be an 80% guy. He's going to be the closer in Colorado. Already got a save this year. Was dominant last year. Remember, he disappeared, right? He was out of baseball for seven seasons. Came back last year. Colorado didn't hesitate this spring. They named Bard the closer. He's already locked one down, and he'll be the closer for a good portion of the season. For the Colorado Rockies, still throws hard, 53% rostered, a little higher than anybody else I've mentioned here today in terms of rostership, but nonetheless, Daniel Bard should be owned across the board and probably the number one ad out of the three relievers I've mentioned here 
today. Okay, so when I take a look at starters, I go Scooble, I go Kikuchi, and I go Taiwan Walker in that order. Closers, Bard, Soto, and Merriweather for the occasional save potential with the Toronto Blue Jays. All right, everybody, make sure you check out all the great content on Roto Bowler's YouTube channel. Check out the Hitter Waiver Wire show if you haven't already. And follow me on Twitter at A-N-E-A-N-O Fantasy. All right, we'll see you next week. Stay smart, stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you next time. Have a good one, folks.